Okay, so if everybody's back, uh, let me introduce uh, Taylor Sello. Uh, he's a sixth year doctoral student at, uh, in Florida International University at the Department of Psychology. And he works with um, Angie Lerd, uh, and they're very into neuroimaging studies, uh, doing meta-analysis. And over the last years, they actually have been developing a lot of uh, tools and, and, and projects related to uh, neuroimaging meta-analysis. Uh, for example, I don't know if you guys know about the Brain Map database, but you should definitely check it out. And, and also, they, they've developed a lot of tools, actually, to, to facilitate that anybody can conduct uh, neuroimaging meta-analysis. And I believe that Taylor actually took a, a step forward even and created a new Python library that I think it's called Nightmare, right? And yeah, this is an open source project uh, to conduct uh, neuroimaging meta-analysis, both uh, with uh, the brain map database and other databases like Neurosynth, and even perform uh, secondary data analysis, like decoding, for example, uh, with uh, the data that you ex extracted from the meta-analysis and, and many, many other things. So it's a really cool project. I, I really recommend you check it out. And also Taylor uh, collaborates with other open source uh, projects uh, like Tedana for multi-echo uh, fMRI precision. And um, I think also the BITS standard, right? You've recently come to, to work with, uh, with the BITS team. And yeah, actually a whole bunch of uh, open source projects. Uh, he's the type of person that gets uh, engaged in everything that, that he can actually give a hand with. So the floor is yours and, and I hope that everybody enjoys a lot uh, the presentation. Uh, okay, cool. So thank you. Um, all right, so what we are planning to do is work through setting up and collaborating on an open source software package. And we're gonna use um, the ICA Aroma toolbox or tool for the basis for that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a repository with a clone of the ICA Aroma code. Um, ICA Aroma is a denoising uh, approach that runs ICA on fMRI data and then uh, classifies each of the components from the ICA as either motion related or not motion related. Um, so we're going to refactor that, uh, which is currently just a set of scripts into a actual Python package. And we're going to have some interactions between me and an echo uh, in terms of opening pull requests and issues and whatnot. Should I share my screen? Probably. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, so here we have GitHub, uh, the BrainHack Denostia organization. I'm going to create a new repository, Aroma, and uh, it's going to be, a, let's just say ICA Aroma as a Python package. Public. So here we're creating some of the files that you're allowed to automatically, um, no license just yet. Uh, the readme is what shows up in the repository. Git ignore tells Git what uh, file types not to track. So for Python, that would be like compiled Python scripts, stuff like that. And a license tells you how you can use and um, edit the code. All right. So now we have an empty repository. This is where you'd start off um, in terms of creating a package or uh, open source software uh, project. And now I'm going to um, start filling it in. So I have my GitHub desktop app. I'm just going to clone the repository to my laptop and then start um, pushing changes. Actually, I'm going to create a fork at the repository so I don't contribute to it directly. So I fork it, uh, which means make a copy of the repository on, under my own account. So instead of brain hectonostia aroma, this one's going to be just T-Solo aroma. 
And from there, by, con by pushing to this repository, I can then open pull requests to um, contribute to the main repository. All right. Might not be ready. All right, so it's taking a moment to register on my uh, app, but um, we'll do that in a few minutes. Right now, um, an echo, could you? Oh, you already started. Okay, an echo's opening issues that were originally on a different repository um, that. Uh, are you know the the problems that we need to address um so let's see if i can clone cool again okay just gonna quit the app and reopen it no nope. all right so i'm just gonna clone it uh directly all right. There we go. Perfect. All right, so it didn't propagate to my app yet, but I just cloned it using the URL. All right. Now let's see, what was the first thing we wanted to tackle? Okay, so in terms of contributing to uh, packages uh, to like as a parent repository. It's a good idea to use a branch uh, approach, branch and pull requests. So I'm gonna create a new branch for a series of changes that I plan to make to the repository. Now, what we did is we actually, over the past couple of weeks, we've been working on this. Um, so we actually have a whole bunch of changes that we can just copy over. And there we go, a whole bunch of files. Um, so, hmm, it did not respect the folder structure for some reason. Well, anyway, um, so that what we have- our, Taylor, that could be our first uh, PR. True, true, okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll open this initial uh, repository a pull request with this initial set of changes and then we can fix them in the second one. All right, so all the change files that you can see in my text editor, which is VS Code, they're all here and they're all uh, shown over here as well in GitHub Desktop because they're all being tracked, meaning that Git uh, recognize them as, recognizes them as files to uh, keep an eye on. So um, doing this from the command line would add a couple of steps, but fortunately I'm using the app. So all I have to do is write a commit message, um, something useful, commit it, publish it, which is pushing it to GitHub. And then I can initialize the pull request from here. So that opened up a web page. All right. So this pull request, uh, for each pull request, um, you have to choose where it's coming from. So where the changes that you have made, which is in this case, my fork, T Solo Roma, and the branch add contents. And I want it to go to the base repository of Brain Hectonostia Aroma and the base, uh, the branch main, which is the default branch these days. 
All right. So um, I create a pull request uh, title, which includes a prefix saying it's an enhancement because I'm adding new stuff. And then um, I have to put in some information about the pull request. So adding files from ICA Aroma Work, which is the other repository where we've been working on this. Okay, so <clears throat> because this is a collaborative project, I wouldn't want to merge my changes directly. I'd want to ask for someone to review them. In this case, because Aneko is working on this with me, I'm going to, whoops, going to request that he do it. There we go. All right, so I've requested a review from Aneko. Um, do you want to switch and show how you would? Yeah. Them? All right, cool. So I'll stop screen sharing. Not sure how. There we go. Thank you. So open. Okay, can you see my um, my screen? You should be able to see my GitHub. So now I should have got an okay. Guys, uh, I, yes. I don't want to interrupt, but you have a question from, from one oh. of the attendees. Thank you, uh, thank you, I couldn't, yeah. didn't see that. He opened a PR using a desktop, but then it was open in the browser, right? And we had to fill it in. Yeah, so the, the pull request was made through the app, but then Taylor, you had to input all your text and the title and stuff on the website. Yep. Right? Um, yeah, so uh, that information is not available from the app, although what it does is it initializes the name of the repository using the name of the branch that you're opening the pull request from. But in very few cases, would you want to keep that information? And you just want to write a better, more, um, interpretable uh, pull request name and information about the pull request in the comment. Hmm. Um, I will show you how I do it later because I don't use the app. So you will learn two different ways of, of dealing with this. Um, so as you can see, I got uh, some notifications here. So I click on the bell and now I'll try not to. Woo. Okay, I've got quite a few. Uh, you can see that the ones I have like an uh, like an exclamation mark, those are issues that have been added um, or that I've been, well, basically to, to any repository or project that I'm following. And the ones with this little icon here um, that's showing like a, an arrow going into the uh, development tree, those are um, pull requests. And here I can see that there was a review requested for me. Um, who made it PR and what, uh, well, the title and the project uh, that this PR is coming from for me. So I'll click on that. And this is what I see now. And it's showing me that Taylor requested that review. Cool. So I can see the title that he wrote, the number of PR. Um, and just some comments here uh, that he made. So if I wanna see what changed, I have to go to this uh, tab, little tab here that says files changed. I click on it. Okay. And it's showing me everything that he added. So those files that have got like a green uh, square here are files that have been added. So, and the same happens with the lines. So this one's fine, I'll just click view. And you can see that there are some red lines here. That means that those lines were uh, removed from the file. So I'm just gonna click on view for all of them because uh, I know 
this is correct. Um, but let's say, ah, there is something. The title is not right. It should say aroma. So I'm gonna make a comment. Uh, I could just write a comment and that's it. But there's this little button here that's super helpful. So if I click on that, it will let me suggest um, what that line should look like. I click on start review. And now Taylor will be able to directly commit this change that I suggested. Um, okay, I know all the files are fine. There's no need to click on view for all of them. I'm gonna click on finish review. Here there are three different uh, possibilities. One is just comment uh, to let him know that I saw it, but you know I don't still approve the PR. I can approve it or I can request changes. Uh, in this case, since the title was wrong, I'm gonna uh, request changes from Taylor. So I'm gonna say, thank you, Taylor. Um, can we change the title of the readme file? And I'm gonna submit my review. Now, this is also related to, to what Stefano said before, uh, with the whole conversation thing in the PRs. My review is a comment to the PR, so it's making the conversation go and showing you the suggestions that I made. So back to you, Taylor. Unless there are questions about this. So um, <clears throat> let's see. So I have a new notification um, from an echo, and it's his review. And look at that. I get a summary of, I get his review, and I get all the changes associated with that review here, all the comments and whatnot. So um, I like his proposed change. So I can, I could just make the change on you know, on my uh, local and then push it. Or I can just commit the suggestion here, like so. And I have applied his suggestion. He is now, you can see that he co-authored the um, commit that uh, that I just made because he's the one who made the suggestion. So now he's sort of a co-author on the PR. And I have one change, um, one commit on remote that I don't have on local. So if I started editing the readme, let's see, this was to the readme, right? Um, if I started editing the readme independently on my local version of the repository, um, I could introduce a merge conflict that would be annoying to deal with, but. Uh, can we try one of those? Just oh, show okay, sure. Um, people how that would work. Yeah. Read me. I'm gonna say no. All caps aroma. Because I, you know, forgot that it already sure. uh, adopted uh, the suggestion. I think we cannot see your. Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. Let me move it over. Okay. okay. So you see, <laughs> all caps aroma right there. Um, save it. GitHub desktop. I also made a bunch of changes. I'm going to deselect all those right now, but they were reorganizing back into the way it's supposed to be. And read me. There we go. Update read me. That's a fine commit message. Great. Push origin. Now let's cross our fingers and see if that all right. makes so, you know, complaint. Your commits on remote. It got mad at me. I should have fetched before pushing anything. So I should have pulled from remote before trying to make any commits to remote or push any commits to remote. So instead I'll fetch, GitHub desktop's very nice. It deals with merge conflicts very easily. Well, better than it used to and certainly better than the command line. So it's giving me a chance to pull origin. There's a conflict, oh no. So I can open that up in VS code and it tells me what the conflict is. So this is what I just made and this is what's coming in from remote. 
and it even allows me to accept one or both of these changes. So in this case, I'm going to go with the incoming change, the one in Echo uh, recommended. Save it, and then I can push. See, it says no conflicts remaining. It figured it out all by itself, and I can commit my merge. And now my remote and my local are fairly happy with one another. I need to push my changes from local to remote. And now they're completely in sync. I still have a bunch of uncommitted changes over here that I'm gonna do right now. I've selected all the changes and now I'm gonna push them. So, or I'm gonna commit them first. So let's say reorganize because folders were missing. All right, and now I can push my changes to my remote. Okay. Um, so there we go. I just made a whole bunch more changes. Um, and now uh, an echoes, if he had approved his, uh, his review would be somewhat out of date. You know, we don't know if that approval really extends to these new changes. So I'm going to re-request a review. Um, and I think the good news is I'm pretty sure that all of my current changes actually match up with the changes did, on yeah. the original repository. So, um, I guess I can just, do you want to screen share to do your review again? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oops. What happened? That's yeah, why my connection is a bit slow. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. So uh, I can see all the changes that Taylor made. Um, and before I forget, it's usually the case that if changes were requ requested, the pull request cannot be merged. That's uh, one of the settings that we can have on our repository if we want. Um, okay, um, he'll, he did this, I'm gonna just resolve it. Um, now I know the changes are good, so I'm just gonna go and approve the pull request. This is, so this looks good to me. Thank you. Okay, so now it's been approved. And uh, now it depends on the project you're working on and who you're working with. Some people may say that, you know, uh, the one making the PR should merge. Um, I'll merge it now just so you know how you, how we do it. Uh, just clicking here on merge pull request and confirm. And now you will see this purple button here saying merged. So if we go to our code, you will see that we now have, oops, that we now have the latest version here. And it will also tell you what commit um, or PR um, the changes were uh, made with. So, um, Taylor, may I open an issue, for example? I think we were missing some automatic tests on this PR. Yeah, the tests and the examples and the resources didn't get copied over, so that's actually, yeah, all of that can be added in pull requests. Okay, I'm gonna first open an issue um, just to make sure we're keeping track of all the conversation happening. So you go into issues and the green button that says new issue. 
And ooh, even the templates are here now. So, okay, I'm gonna say um, TST for test. Uh, we're missing automatic tests. Um, yeah, I don't feel like writing all that stuff. So next steps would be create element text test from right now. Um, I can even add a label to the issue. So for example, hmm, we don't have a testing one. I think that's a custom uh, label, but okay. you can just type it in and it'll create it. Okay. So we've got testing one now. Yeah, that's fine. Or, well, should have, should have been tests, but anyway. I can assign the issue to myself, for example. Um, and as Stefano said before, like you can add it to a milestone or whatever. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Thank you. And I'll submit the issue. Okay, but now, first of all, I have to fork it because I still haven't. So I'm going to click fork my own profile. I'm actually going to open this. Okay, this is my fork. I'm going to copy the, the link because I'm going to clone it. So here. This is how I do it. I just write git clone and paste it at the link. So now if I move into Aroma, I should have the, you see, the main branch with all the files. Uh, but now I I just have my own forked repo. I have to uh, link it with the with the main brain hack Donosi Aroma repository. So I'm gonna copy the link. And I'm gonna do git add remote upstream as Stefano said and paste the link there. Oh git remote add sorry. There you go. So now if I can show you that I have both. I've got my origin, I've got my upstream. Perfect. And my main should be up to date with upstream, but just to check. Yeah, it's already up to date. Awesome. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna add some new changes. Let me find this code thing here. Go aroma. So Taylor, we're missing the tests folder, right? And the resources, so the masks that probably are used for the tests. Um, okay. In test data, but yeah. I'm gonna copy that over here. So paste. Okay, so here, here they are. And then in order to add our testing, um, we have to, oops, did it twice. Sorry about that. I should work on my patience. 
Um, okay, so yeah, now in order to have um, automatic testing, we have to set up um, a tool or a platform to, to carry out those tests um, with GitHub. So what this, mean, what this means is that whenever we push a commit to GitHub, um, the tests will run by default, like automatically. And then we can check that they all pass. So I am missing nothing, I think. Oh, the circles. Yeah, we've got it all here. So Taylor already moved in the config file to set up the automatic testing. So this basically is just a YAML file that is gonna tell the platform um, the different tests that we wanna carry out, um, what environments to, to build for those tests, and where to um, save the results basically. Um, so it's just a bunch of steps saying, okay, if you want this uh, Kionda environment, want you to run this uh, installation process, um, want you to activate it, and then just run the, the tests. In our case, we've got them in the make file here. So we're using PyTest for testing. Um, and we've got some unit tests and integration tests ready, which basically are just uh, some silly files, um, silly scripts. So for example, if you go into the test utils, we've got a, a, a unit test to check that our cross correlation function is working properly. So we uh, input some silly data, in this case, uh, A and B. We know that the result will be this number right here. So we run the function, we get the result, and we make sure that the result we get and the one that we know should be true are the same. That's what the assert line is doing. Um, we've got the same for the features one, uh, just you know, testing some other um, functions. And then we have the integration test, which basically means, okay, let's run the entire pipeline with some data and make sure that um, nothing's broken. So I think I'm not missing anything here. I'm gonna add it. So I can see the status of the repo. Oh, I didn't, I forgot to open a branch actually. I'm gonna open a branch now. Uh, check out the this is good check out base for creating a new branch. Uh, we can call it um, um, tests. Yeah. So uh, it switched. Uh, since I didn't add or commit anything, the changes will move to the new branch. Now I'm just gonna check. Oops. Okay, so it's Git status tell me that there are these two folders here that haven't been tracked. So I'm gonna add those to the, for the PR. Oh, what's wrong with me today? So get up resources, get up tests. So we're gonna create a, a pull request now. I'm gonna commit these changes. Uh, automatic testing. Okay, the commit is telling me the files that are gonna be added to the pull request. Now I'm gonna push it to origin, which is my version of the repo. And the branch name is tests. And you will see a rocket, hopefully, launching here. Once it you know, pushes everything. It's taken a bit because we had some masks here. So when you have um, heavy data, there's, there's a rocket. 
um, when you have heavy data, it takes a, li a little bit of time to push it. Okay, so now if I go to the pull request section here, see, I've got this little yellow window saying me I have a branch with changes that I can confirm pull request. I'm gonna click on that. And this closes, I don't know, is it 11, 12? Oh, 13, there you go. So when you, when you link a pull request to an issue, um, it will close the issue once you merge the pull request. So I'm gonna add another test. I'm here, I'm gonna add the, there you go. You can also preview every comment you make on GitHub, this little preview thing here. Okay, so I'm gonna create it. Same way that Taylor did. I'm gonna give it the test enable. And I'm gonna ask Taylor to review it. However, this will not work just yet because we have to um, configure Circle CI, which is a platform we're gonna use um, to make it work with, uh, with our repo. So I'm gonna go into Circle CI. Go to up. I hope this is all clear because I feel like I'm going a bit fast. Here it's showing me every um, comment that's been made to one of the, to the actually to the original ICLMA uh, repo that we've been working with. Uh, but here, if you want to set up a new project, you have to go into projects. And here you can see that we've got aroma here. I can set up a project. And since we already have an existing config file, um, which is actually this one I should refer in the dot circle CI folder, it has to be in that folder for this to work. I believe. Um, so we already have this file. I'm gonna say use existing config file. And we're gonna start building. And now I'm gonna show you how I um, set up Circle CI for my projects. You can already see it's running some of the tests. Uh, if you go into project settings, you're gonna have a couple of um, little things you can tweak. Um, so here I'm gonna say, we do wanna run builds on pull requests from forks. That means if I make a pull request from my fork, I want that to, I want the tests to run. And then we're gonna just pass on this too and then auto cancel redundant builds. That means that if you, I just pushed something and I'm gonna push another change right after. We, I don't wanna wait until the previous tests run. I just want the new uh, changes to run the tests. Okay, I believe that I'm gonna have to make an empty commit to make things. Um, Although empty, Okay, trigger tests. Uh, I think yeah, you have to push it. So hopefully, if I didn't make any mistake, um, we should see the check. There you go. So now GitHub is showing me that this pull request has got some tests running. Um, usually you don't wanna merge any pull request that doesn't pass all the tests because that means the 
well, there's something wrong with the code and you're not getting the, the results you, you expect. Um, I'm just gonna, you can also click here on details and it will take you to CircleCI and it will show you the output of the tests. Um, do you want to comment something, Taylor? I mean, this might take a little bit until we see the results. Well, uh, not really. Uh, just it's uh, very helpful to have tests. Oh, we've got a we've got a question, Connie. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so Circle CI is one platform where you can um, have your automatic tests happen, basically. Um, oh, um, you, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, uh, the CI in Circle CI means continuous integration. There are a number of continuous integration tools. I think the main ones that most people use are Circle CI, Travis CI, and um, what's that, Rocket? Something with rockets. I don't. I, the ones I have used are Circle CI and Travis CI, and all it does is it. Um, you can see all the steps um, on the screen. It lets you set up an environment for your code, um, like uh, you can grab a Docker a Docker image that will have all the stuff you need installed, and then you can set up an environment with additional packages. And then it'll run these automatic tests um, and you want to, uh, this helps you, um, this helps you review code without having to run every line of the code when there's our changes to it, right? If someone makes some yeah. changes, you want to have unit tests that compare what those changes or what the, the original function should do and the outputs that should come from it. So that way you know that those changes either change the outputs or don't change the outputs. And if they change the outputs, then you have a reason to <laughs> dig deeper into why they're changing the outputs. So they're actually pretty helpful, for example, when uh, a package um, changes version or something, um, changes how one of their functions work, the automatic test will let you know that, hey, this function is not working anymore, so you should have a look at it. Um, this finished already, so for example, this silly unit test, you can see it passed, it's got the green ticks, um, and it's showing you all the um, files that it's gone through, and then how much of a coverage um, you have on your files. Coverage meaning how, what's the percentage of lines in each of your files that you have tested. In this case, um, oops, I'm gonna show you another example of a test that doesn't pass. It looks like there are a couple questions. Um, oh, okay. So can you run CircleCI another way that isn't through the command line? Um, so CircleCI is running a series of things, including PyTest in this case. You can run PyTest, which is just locally running your tests from the command line on your laptop. But um, CircleCI itself is um, running as, a, as an app, you know, um, called through CircleCI's API by GitHub and or vice versa. So you're not really doing it through the command line. I'm, I'm not sure if that helps. I think um, the fact that I did everything on my command line may be confusing. Um, but anyway, you're going to create another PR project, Taylor. So um, whoever asks can see how you would do it with the, ah, with the app. Okay. I mean, it's just that whenever you push something to GitHub, it will automatically do it. Right, and especially pull requests. Yeah. Um, and then another question is, so it's not something that you can do on GitHub already then? Um, so if I understand the question right, um, GitHub you know, doesn't have continuous integration tools in the, in the GitHub app, right, or in the, GitHub Toolkit, it uses a lot of integrations with external services like CircleCI, um, read the docs, stuff like that, where you can, you know, it, there's a whole marketplace of apps where you can set up 
to work with your repository to do all sorts of cool things, whether it's running formatting so that all of your incoming code is actually formatted to match your style preferences or um, running Circle CI, running Travis, whatever else. I hope that answers your question. Okay. You, you can actually have tests for just about anything. Um, for other projects, we've got tests on documentation, for example, so you don't have to load the entire um, documentation pages on your on your computer. So this is just an example of uh, one of the tests that doesn't run. You have like a red exclamation mark there saying, hey, this didn't work. Uh, the cool thing is you can see it live here. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, there's a question, someone's interested on debugging locally with VS Code, or all tests are online. So you can run tests on VS Code. Um, I don't know how you, how people debug with VS Code. I have never managed to do that, but VS Code lets you use a terminal, and so you could just run PyTest from the terminal inside VS Code. If that's helpful for you. That's how I do it anyway. So you could do like PyTest, Roma tests. Um, I'm gonna do the easy one, Utils. And this will do the same thing that the Circle CI is doing uh, on the cloud, let's say. But in terms of how you debug, um, if the red dots here, I have no idea. Maybe Taylor, you know how to do it. Um, so I normally run tests um, quickly, like F5. F5. Uh, is F5 like a run to debug command like in MATLAB? F5 um, here? It says it looks a bit cumbersome. Is there a quick way like F5? I, I don't know what F5 uh, is a shortcut for. Yeah, it's it says debug oh. configuration. So okay. I guess I could select Python file here. I don't have an interpreter. Um, this one. So I mean, in terms of, I, I'm not entirely sure if compiling. Uh, so, uh, in terms of running, running only is, is helpful with respect to tests, assuming your code is well written. Uh -huh. um, meaning that there are no, so like there can be bugs in the way the code is structured or there can be bugs in how the code is actually written. For example, um, a mistyped variable, right? The variable doesn't exist because it's mistyped in the script somewhere. In that case, Python has linters and lots of, lots of apps that are actually very useful for catching those kinds of errors. And, you know, um, when things are indented too much or not indented enough, or if you don't have something to close and opening parenthesis, stuff like that. So um, those all show up in VS Code easily enough. Um, uh, they, they just, depending on which apps you have installed, because uh, you can install, you know, Python linter apps and Python formatting apps and different, you know, all the different languages. Um, but in terms of catching code that is valid but not but doesn't do what you want it to do I guess is the way to say it you would use PyTest so in addition to running you'd actually have specific inputs and outputs. I mean another way of debugging that I use is just using the breakpoint function here so if I run the test again It will stop there and I can have a look at the code basically. So um, maybe I should, well, I can just go on. If I do like N for next, now it should move on to the next uh, line and it will run A, A, A here. Oh, I, I run the integration test actually, sorry about that. I'm gonna do it the right way then. Gonna add the breakpoint here. This is how I usually do it when I'm, you know, like making sure that everything's 
fine. So it stopped at the breakpoint. And now if I do like print A, I've got the A. Print B, I've got the B. But if I try to print um, cross core for, for example, it will tell me it doesn't exist. So that's another way of just, you know, like checking that your code is fine. Um, Taylor, would you like to review my PR? I hope the questions were answered. Yes, let me um, say that they were answered, hopefully. Um, and then, yes, absolutely. Okay. So let me share. Probably never. Uh, there we go. Okay. Nope. There we go. Okay. So let me pull up. There we go. I've got a pull request open. And all right, and I'm going to review it. Uh, so I, I know all the changes here are what uh, we had in the old repository, so I'm not going to dig into the actual code, but one could uh, to review it. Um, for example, I'm not going to make this or require changes, but would be great to have doc strings. We like to have information about the tests so that way we don't forget what they're actually meant to do. Um, I added it as a single comment rather than a review because I'm not actually going to hold anything up based on that. All right, but you can see in the conversation there we have would be great to have doc strings for the test and we could discuss that if we wanted to. Um, and you notice that the integration tests are failing so generally if this was a well-established project that would be a cause for us to say not going to merge until they're passing. Uh, in this case, though, you know, um, we expected those integration tests to fail because we didn't. Uh, so Aroma works um, using FSL for a lot of things. It just calls out to the command line to run FSL. And we didn't feel like setting up a whole Docker uh, image that would have FSL in order to run them because one of the main goals that we have here is to actually get rid of the FSL and any non-Python dependencies. So that way this can be just a Python package. So in that case, um, you know, it uh, looks good to me. Um, let's, uh, let's pretend that I actually reviewed everything by hand and it's good. I'm submitting my review. And actually, um, do you mind if I uh, quickly just go through the aroma, the basics of the aroma code, just so that way people have more context? Yeah, sure thing. All right, so the Aroma code. So ICA Aroma is, as I mentioned before, it's a very useful tool and it's a very simple tool for just running ICA and classifying components as motion or noise. And it has, what it uses for that is a series of features that it extracts from the ICA component maps, the ICA component time series, motion parameters, and um, the power spectra of the ICA components. There's a lot of you know, initial stuff to get everything in the right format, but here's the core code down here. Let's see if I can find it, there we go. So first it uses FSL to run, so it uses Melodic to run ICA. Now Melodic has a mixture model tool or algorithm that allows it to uh, threshold the ICA component maps. Actually, we checked the paper before. Um, it helps with the accuracy but it's actually not completely necessary. Hmm. We'd probably want to retrain the classifier though, if we were going to, which means we'd need the original data. Anyway, uh, so that's good to know. Um, but uh, from there, it takes the ICA component maps, registers them to m &I space, and then it computes the series of features. So a spatial feature just from the, uh, the thresholded maps of the components, a time series feature based on correlations between the component time series and motion parameters, a frequency feature based on the power spectra, and um, then it uses a classification, a very straightforward classification function to combine those four features and predict whether a component is motion related or not. 
and then it has some nice plotting to make it easier uh, to interpret those components. And then finally, it can apply denoising of the original data based on the good and bad components. So um, the actual, you know, compared to say fMRI prep, right? Aroma is just a small step in an overall workflow and therefore it's very easy to make it very modular and um, uh, straightforward, I guess. And that's part of the goal here. All right, so the pull request is, is approved, I believe. So if you wanna merge it, we're all set. Oh, um, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so merging is pull request, confirm merge, and there we go. Now we have testing. And um, what you generally want as well, or what's nice is to have the, you know, a number of things, including a link to your code coverage, a link to your tests and a link or your testing results and a link to say your documentation if it's rendered on a separate website in your readme as badges. These unfortunately point to the wrong repository at the moment, they point to the other one. So if we follow the badge, it goes to ICA Aroma Org instead of just Aroma. And that, that's something else we can do. To yeah, make. we can open up here and fix it, yeah. All right, let's see, what's, uh, what's our next step? Hey, that's actually the next step, I think. <laughs> oh. Um, I mean, it should be the same link, but uh, without the ICR Aroma, it should be just Aroma. The right. rest is just the same. Um, so, okay. So since this is a collaborative project, um, we always, so when it's a collaborative project, it's proper etiquette to, uh, generally, depending on your project's contributing guidelines to always open an issue before you open a pull request. So that way other people can discuss whether the issue is actually something that needs to be dealt with, right? So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open an issue for the badges. Update badges to a new repo. I'm gonna skip just like I did, and I'm gonna skip some of the steps here. But I'm gonna say it's a documentation related issue. It's a bug. Eh, it's not really worth as a bug. And it's a good first issue. So we try to label um, issues as good first issues if there's something that newcomers can attempt. And in this case, we're just changing a couple of lines of markdown. So basically text. Uh, which means it's a pretty good issue for um, new people if they want to get engaged with the project and learn about it. All right. So, um, Aneko, do you want to do this, Pierre? Um, yeah, sure thing. Let me pause. Do you want me to share my screen or? Uh, I mean, it should be way pretty fast. Yeah. So maybe it's not worth it. I mean, I'm just gonna edit. The... Actually, you know what? We could do it on GitHub, like the actual website. Okay, to show yeah. Oh, yeah, files. That's a good idea. There if you want to do the screen share from there. Yeah. Um, let me find Zoom now because I lost it. Actually, you can do it from the main account to the 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 main uh, repository instead of your branch or your fork. Yeah, I'll do it on the main thing, yeah. Cool. Okay, I think you can see my my screen. Um, okay, I just refreshed uh, just to make sure I've got everything here. Uh, when you're on, on a repo, you can see the readme down here and it will show you a little pencil here. But if you click on it, it will let you edit the, uh, the readme file. Um, so in this case, since the change of the, I mean, you, you can see there's like a, cl a clear pattern of the, of the links. So we've got Kodikov, which is the coverage of the code, GH, then the organization, 
name of the of the repository of the branch uh, which in our case for example is main I'm gonna add it as we talk it's aroma uh, and then this is just taking the the SVG file so an image for the batch uh, and we have to do the same thing with the actual link here I'm gonna call it aroma um, the same thing happens with circle CI they work pretty much the same way so same patterns um, this is gonna be aroma it's main and then the style you, you can change the style of the badge and all that stuff if you want um, this is basically a query um, to the API so yeah this aroma here and then that should be it so I can come down here I'm gonna say um, fix uh, links to patches um, we've got two different ways of making our changes happen one is to directly commit to the to the main branch this is definitely not something you have you should do um, you should always create a new branch but um, I think we don't want to do the pull request and review thing again uh, I think that was pretty clear so I'm, I will directly commit to the plan, to the main branch um, yeah, I can right. do that because I've got the the permissions to do so I'd say it really depends on the project whether that's considered you know um, impolite or not I guess um, you know for a small projects where you understand that that's you know for small bug fixes or documentation fixes it's reasonable to commit directly yeah. uh, for a large project um, you know I like I contribute to the bid specification and I, I wouldn't do that to I would never do that to the bid specification there might be one or two maintainers who um, are sort of assigned that level of uh, responsibility I guess you could say um, so it, it's all about uh, you know project specific guidelines and um, etiquette I suppose yeah. right so I uh, you, you see that in, in our repository right now um, the budgets didn't change that's because the tests are failing and we've got the tests set up so that uh, code cop is updated when all the tests pass so I'm going to show you an example of fist to bits for example um, the badges look like this so fist to bits circle CI is passing and the coverage uh, is at 95 percent as you can see here you can add a bunch of other patches um, the license for example or the Python version you um, you support number of contributors that are down here um, so that's how you would update the, the badges uh, we've got 10 minutes left um, maybe there are questions you want to ask oh there you go thank you Julia you're rocking <laughs> okay um, I understand the end of the tutorial someone seeing this for the first time let's see how you use Roma loading it like a package when you need to use it technical from its reboot yeah so the, the way I mean you can set up uh, any repository to be a package or it can just be a set of scripts uh, in our case we made it a package which means we can install it and then we can just call it call its name and run it so I'm gonna show you how we actually have um so we have it's importable like a package yes um, but we also set up CLI you know command line interfaces um, that would let you call it from the command line as well. Um, and ultimately what we would want to do is we'd want to deploy the package to PyPy um, mm -hmm. so that people could just, so right now Neko is going to install it. Pip yeah, install. Gonna, you can do either dot or if you're a developer and want to collaborate, you, hit, you do a minus E dot. Right. He's doing it from the from the repository that's already cloned. Yeah, it's uh, here. 
Um, but if I didn't have it cloned, I, would, I want. I imagine I want to choose Roma. It would need to be on uh, on pip, for example, um, in order to install it. And then I would have to do pip install Roma or whatever name we want to give it. Right. So now, if I do Roma, it should give me the help. Hopefully, there you go. On how to use it. So, oh, it, it, because there's a required argument. Um, if you do aroma dash h, yeah, it'll help. Um, and so, this the current version of this code is um, we've gone a long way toward making it a package. It's still not, I mean, it still requires FSL, for example. So, it wouldn't be very good as a self contained tool. Um, but when we get through with it, it will be pure Python, and then you would be able to just, um, you know, install you'd it. need the Python dependencies, but you wouldn't need, you know, FSL or AFNI or any other external tools. Yeah, it's just not there yet. So, Julia, just to to uh, finish answering to your question, uh, if this were not a Python package or set up as a Python package, you, you could still call it as py Python aroma. Um, but in our case, I mean, it, it, it won't work because it's not set up that way. Um, any other question? Um, I mean, I would like to mention that this is an open project uh, that people can join. So as you can see, we've got 12 issues open. Um, and we are, we would be more than grateful if uh, you, you joined us and um, helped us with this project. Two things that we don't have right now that we should probably open an issue for, but um, you know, for open source packages, it's kind of important to have information about contributing and code of conduct. I think Oscar uh, went through uh, for NIPREPS the contributing and code of conduct stuff. We should have our own versions, you know, with project specific information. Um, for both of those uh, to be more welcoming to uh, new people. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're interested, you wanna help us, um, there are some low level Python um, things to do that should be labeled as good first issues. Uh, for example, dealing with the plots and making them nicer. Uh, I'm gonna just add here. Um, we've got the, uh, the pandas one you already uh, worked on it, right, Taylor? Uh, but still, we have uh, issues that are good first issues that actually documentation, for example, doesn't involve any programming. So you can help us with uh, writing the documentation. Um, yeah, I mean, it's mainly done, I would say. It's just little things that we have to um, to finish. So yep. and if you want to, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Once it is done, uh, we're planning on trying to use this version for uh, tools like fMRI prep, as well as, um, so we both contribute to Tadana, which is for multi-echo fMRI. And one of our goals has been to be able to, so Tadana, what it does is it decomposes using ICA and then it assigns uh, components as good or bad based on multi-echo uh, multi signal decay features. So in both cases, we have an ICA that we then classify components, but we at the moment have to run it twice, once for Aroma and once for Matadana, if you want to use both. And one of the goals here is to sort of standardize things. That way we can start, you know, if you have Aroma, Tadana, fix or any other ICA based classification algorithms, you can apply them all to the same ICA, the all the same decomposition um, without having to rerun anything. Yeah, we've got also bits. Uh, we're, we're trying to make it bits compatible. So if you run into bits, you can uh, give us a hand actually. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're interested, just uh, email us or or just open an issue, why not? Uh, we'll be more than happy to, to have you on board. Um, yeah, I 
Is there anything else we missed or put it in color? I hope Stefano is watching this and he's happy because he asked me like, hey, I need your help to set up uh, the automatic test sensor QCI. So. <laughs> okay, so we've got four minutes. Any questions?